Hi, and welcome to the struggle series. This is my bunny Daisy. She actually looks like this. I'm not even kidding. Okay, so I thought I'm struggling as a wife, a sister, a daughter, a business owner, an entrepreneur, an employee, a bun mom. I struggle. I struggle with my mental health. I struggle with my business. I struggle, struggle with vocabulary clearly and I thought you know what let me just share it because I'm sure there's other people out there as well that are struggling but it feels lonely you know so by sharing I hope that I can you know make you feel that you're not alone I'm not alone and maybe we can like grow together not grow up well you are gonna grow up but okay so let's talk about my mental health I struggle with my mental health some days is better than others other days I just want to binge eat and I want to like watch movies and I don't want to work on my business and I don't know why I'm getting emotional but it's just just struggle <laughs> um like for the past couple of days I've been wanting to sit down and record a couple of YouTube videos even just one and then I, I think, okay, I haven't done this and I can't do this because I haven't done that and I can't do that be because of that. And my mind is just like, and at the end of the day, I can't record that video. I can't get it up there. So the current issue is I need to find an editor. So I'm in the process of looking for an editor. But when they do a video, it takes four days to turn around. But I need to upload a video this week. So I can edit, but I just want to pull my hair out when I edit. Or I can do the easy thing is upload or shoot clips on my phone. And then if I need to delete something, I just redo that clip and then put it together and just upload it, you know, easiest way. But I just, there's a block. I don't know what it is. Uh, I've been scrolling a lot of social media in the last couple of days. Um, I've been eating mindlessly. I, I don't know what emotion is I'm eating, I'm feeding. I'm covering up, I'm filling, I don't know what it's called. I don't know what emotion it is, okay? And it's it's frustrating because you have tasks, you have goals, you have a vision. And when you feel like that, it's, it's even more frustrating because you can't take those little baby steps that are gonna get you on to the road, to the vision. So that's the first struggle series. And I just wanna, in these struggle series, they're raw, unedited I just they're coming from my heart and I just want to be honest with the struggles because I think a lot of entrepreneurs nowadays and a lot of influencers and people of impact they just don't show behind the scenes shit that goes on sometimes every day sometimes once a week and I just want to be real and transparent with you guys because I know if I'm struggling there's definitely a lot of people out there that are struggling as well I know with every day I need to like one of my non-negotiables is to do my meditation, do my journaling, do either some sort of inner healing. So that's going to be like other somatic exercises or TRE or uh, DMT, some of those. But it's just so I come on from work and then I sit down on my laptop. And then when I finish from working on my laptop, I just want to go watch a movie. I don't want to meditate. I don't want to do any of the healing work. I just want to switch off. But then you feel guilty for not doing the inner work because it's a non-negotiable and it's like this whole palaver in your brain. It's never ending. You know what I mean? That's, can you see? You can't see. I've got a little rabbit there. Let me see if you can see her. There she is. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I think she might be a bit camera shy. Yeah, another thing that caused my mental health to decline was a, a lot was, so we had two of them. They were lockdown rabbits, this one's Daisy, the other one was Lola, and she passed away this February. I've got her ashes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring them. So this was... This is a paw print. She was a, a a mix. I can't remember what it was, but she was a chunky baby. And this is her ashes. So yeah, she passed away in March, uh, February. She was 
three years old and she for the duration of her life she always had stomach problems so gi stasis in rabbits is very 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 common it's the number one killer and she had gi stasis like all the time and in the beginning when she first had it we didn't know what it what it was uh so i went on facebook group and i just typed it typed up what it was and there was loads of bunny owners that had it before and they gave advice and obviously we went to the vet so we got the medication and then we learned how to kind of help her when she had the geostasis so she had it so many times in those three years that when she had it the last time we were so overconfident that she was going to get through it that we didn't um we didn't see the importance of leaving her with the vet so basically what happened was the day before she passed away in the morning around so in the morning she was fine around 11 o'clock i noticed she was pressing on her stomach and that means they're in pain when they're pressing on the stomach because it's not normal for a rabbit to do that unless they're distressed or in pain so then we you know we you massage her stomach get rid of the gas and you give her critical care uh and you maybe give her water you can maybe give her loxicam which is like a pain relief if you have gut motility drug you can do that as well as so we did a lot of that we didn't have the gut motility but we did all of the other, other stuff and we got her to run around uh, and you repeat that process every two hours until she's better or either you take her to the vet but because we've done it so many times we knew what to do so we did that and then that day i was supposed to go to work but i didn't want to go to work i didn't want to leave her and so i stayed home that day so all day and then we did phone the vets um did we phone the vets? I can't remember. I think we phoned the vets in the evening, but it was after hours. It was the emergency vets. And I think they said to just keep doing what we were doing. I can't remember that day is such a blur. But anyway, two o'clock in the morning, we noticed it's been almost a full day and she's not better. And we're like, okay, we need to take her to the vet. So we phoned the 24 hour vets and we told them what's happening. And they said, yeah, just bring her in. So we brought her in and the vet was like we can keep her over for a couple of days and it's going to be 1300 pounds and at that time because of the money i was like i don't have the money i'm sure she'll be fine we can just take her home and i think because i was so tired that day and i wasn't thinking straight i told my husband can you just take this decision because i just can't think straight and then he agreed to it as well so we just you know the, the vet gave her the gut motility drug so if and she said you know the gut motility drug can either save her or kill her because if there is a blockage in her stomach and she takes the gut motility that blockage will pass down into a passage further into her intestine and that can cause a problem so we don't know if it was the gut motility drug but brought her home and then throughout the night you know you'd wake up every now and then to make sure she's okay and she wasn't she was in the same condition and then in the morning 7 a.m she was worse off way 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 worse off um she was in the corner and like you know just not in a good way and because my husband hadn't slept the whole night i thought let me just let him sleep when he wakes up i'll let him know that she's not well so we can take her to the vets um so when he woke up i was like she's not doing well we need to we need to go to the back to the vets again so then we took her to not our vets but there was another branch that was open at that time and um we took Lola, we took Daisy as well because you're not supposed to separate bonded bunnies and the vet, she saw her and she's like, she's in a bad way, she's gonna, she's gonna pass away. And that was such a shock, I was not expecting that. Here is my baby and you're telling me that she's gonna pass away. Um, so I just broke down, my husband was in the car, I phoned him, I was like, you said you need to come in and give Lola kisses just in case she passes away because this is what the vet is saying. So he came in, we gave Lola kisses and we just left her with the vet. And I said to the vet, you know, she needs to come home. Like, she's my baby. Do whatever you need to, she needs to come home. We left her and we drove back. We were both just shocked, heartbroken, in like, just, just shock. Like, it's not like she was unwell for weeks and weeks. She'd literally been unwell just a day. And here she is, we've been told that she's going to pass away. It was just like a massive shock. So we came home and then there was this horrible feeling where you think she's going to be okay, but then you think she might not be okay. And it's this constant battle in your brain. And then the, the longer the phone doesn't go off, it means it's a good thing, right? So two hours had gone by and then we received a phone call from the vet and already the sinking feeling in your stomach is like, okay, what's going on? 
and the vet goes i think she asked do we have your permission to put her to sleep and i'm like no no definitely not and then as i was on the phone literally i think oh no no the vet said she had perked up for a little bit and then she declined and she said that's normal in animals that are about to die and that just it terrified me and then she asked you know do we have your permission to put her to sleep and i was like no and then literally i think 10 seconds later um she said the nurse is checking her heartbeat and she's passed away and then pff, when she said that oh the pain in my stomach um i was just overcome with emotion i could barely talk on the phone my husband was with me and it was just like i've lost my baby like it's like i'd lost a baby like she was part of our life she was our baby and it was just the most horrible feeling ever and that day i was supposed to go to work but i couldn't think straight like i was just oh. i was overcome with grief and shock and this one i think knew something was up because she could sense that we were both like so distraught um and normally in the evenings we'd like close up their cage so that the new is bedtime but that day we were like she's gonna be on her own we don't want her to be isolated so we just took apart the cage the top bit and we just left it open and she just slept in our room on the sofa and i felt so bad for her because that was her partner that was her bestie for three years in rabbit years three years is like seven like 21 years or something it's a long time and it was just horrible knowing that she's lost her best friend it was horrible knowing that lola's never coming home again that was just a horrible feeling and then wherever you'd look in the room you'd see her you'd see lola but obviously she's not there but because she's been there before you just see her and everything would just make you cry i think the first like week was just a lot of crying a lot of shock and it was it just a shock to your system. It was just a shock. Um, so yeah, that day after a couple of hours, after we'd calmed down, we'd gone, we went to the vet, we took Daisy because I, th I think I Googled it and they said it's important for the partner to see their partner so that they have closure or something. So I took Daisy, I was, oh, look at her. Can you see her? So we took her, I was holding her like this, literally like a baby, and we went to the vet, we went downstairs, and Lola was on a table, dead. One of her ears was bandaged up, bandaged up, and that's probably where they, you know, were giving her medicine, whatever from. Um, she had a little blanket on top of her, but she was hard, and th the nurse did say that the body's going to be hard because of rigor mortis, so just don't freak out. Um, and just seeing her lying there, it was because I'd cried so much that day, I couldn't cry anymore. I was in shock and I was trying to cry, but I couldn't cry because there was no tears left. Like she had a little blanket on her and her eyes were wide, like shock. And it was just horrible. It was like yesterday she was fine and today she's gone. Like it was just, I can't put it into words. Um, so yeah, we had this one and then. I put her next to Lola so that she could sniff her, she could maybe understand what she's going on because I'm sure they have a way of communicating with each other, right? And if one's communicating and the other one's not communicating back, then the first one is going to know, okay, something is up. So I just wanted to, for her to have some sort of closure. Um, and yeah, obviously my husband was with me. Um, I took some pictures of Lola and it was just, I, I you know... I rubbed her fur and it was just obviously her body was hard but her, her fur was fluffy and it was just it was just a shock it was like her body was there but she was gone like that's what it felt like like she'd left her vessel but her her soul had gone like out of this world and just to have know that feeling that i'm never gonna see her again ever she's never gonna come home again ever it's just a horrible horrible feeling we were there, I think, for like five or ten minutes because the stupid beeping behind us wouldn't stop. It was some machine for something and it was loud and it was just like every time you hear it, you're like kind of jerk. It was just, yeah, that is one of probably 
my most horrible memories ever. I mean, I've gone through some stuff in my childhood, but I think just losing her was just the most horrible thing um, a pet owner, I think, could go through. And I think because we were in such shock and we didn't want to, we didn't want it to be a reality, we left her with the vets for ages. We didn't want to bury her. We didn't want to, like, put her away because then that would mean that she's actually gone, gone. So we waited a long time and I wanted to bury her in my dad's garden, but it wasn't deep enough. And then to bury your pet in like a private cemetery, it's like 500 pounds a year um, plus fees or something. And it's, yeah, there was that. And the uh, only other option left was to cremate her. And I did not want to cremate her. No way, I did not. That was like, if all op options fail, then that. I did not want to cremate her. Um, we w went to my dad's garden. We dug up in his garden, but there was like this much soil and underneath it was concrete, flat out concrete. And we were like, that's not enough. What if the fox smells it and it digs up her body? And so we didn't bury her there. And I had to make the phone call to the vets to tell them to, to cremate her. And on the website that you go to, you choose what kind of, um, what kind of, I don't know what this is called, urn you want to choose. There was a flowery one, there was a different shape one, and I went for this one. And this contains her ashes. And that's one of my regrets that I cremated her. I should have just buried her in dad's garden. She was tiny. I'm sure she would have been fine. And when I go to, you know, if I'd gone to visit dad, I could have visited her as well, but just, yeah, when I first, so when we went to pick up Lola, it was just horrible. It was just like, she's in here, like. But yeah, that's one of the things I struggle with. That's one of the things that, that impaired my, my thinking. This little baby's right here. And so this baby just means so much to me. Like, she's so strong as well, like. You could tell she was struggling and she was missing a friend and she's come through it and she's strong and she's happy and she's doing binkies every day and you know she's being naughty she's being herself and she's like following us around she's become more attached to us now since losing her friend but it's just horrible like what happened yeah so if you've stayed to the end thank you so much for listening to that but this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to be doing struggle series, talking about real struggles that I go through in the hope that somebody relates and we build a community and we heal, grow and laugh together. My washing machine is making noises. I need to go and check it out. Thank you so much for staying to the end and watch this video next. In the meantime, eat your cake and do your curls. I know it's cringy. Okay, bye.